Well, good morning, everybody. And um, well, the motto of the Congress is venturing to new realms. And it is not only about uh, curcuma and artesunate and hyperthermia. It is as well about consciousness. And this is uh, what I would like to introduce to you today. So I would want to talk about realms, different realms of consciousness, uh, which can be, can move into an, becoming an integral part of tumor therapy. And I'd like to take one slice out of this, and this is talking to cancer cells. So if you induce a trance into patients, uh, they are able to talk with their tumor cells, and I'd like to give you some examples on uh, what can be experienced. I'll have two slides of brief introduction into body and mind. Then I would want to present you three patient cases and uh, have a, a little summary at the end. So, well, we know we are body, mind, and spirit. Cancer patients, by the way, just as well. And the focus of medicine today clearly is on the body, which is perfectly okay. But there is a potential in mind and spirit just as well. And actually, this is not being addressed. And it is truly a potential. So body is matter. And, and Einstein once said, concerning matter, we have all been wrong. What we call matter actually is energy. Energy whose vibration has been lowered down uh, that they are perceptible to the senses. In the end, there is no matter. So that means the body is a vibration, is energy just as well. And that part of energy can be influenced by the mental realms. And that is what it is about. And maybe... A short introduction to myself. I was in, uh, in oncology my whole life, uh, in uh, uh, IT, in uh, radiation, and I founded uh, a hyperthermia company, so I was in hyperthermia. And this is where I realized that talking to patients when, when you are in a quiet situation can come up, can reveal so much uh, stuff uh, that I decided that I will leave all these business kind of things and start concentrating uh, on, on that true potential. On a strictly scientific perspective, it's actually the exceptions, the contradictions that have the potential for a true innovation. And uh, if you remember in 1900, there was uh, physics at the time was pretty much sure. Everything was detected. And there was a guy, um, Max, who um, investigated the characteristic of glowing cannonballs. And he found this irritating uh, um, movement uh, that they don't continuously uh, change, but in jumps. It was Max Planck, and it came out the quant uh, mechanics, which revolutionized uh, our life. So it was actually the very exception that started out. And if you look at cancer patients, it is interesting to investigate so-called spontaneous remissions, uh, which is just another word for I have not the hell. I have no idea why it uh, all of a sudden went away. So... There are some authors, and uh, remarkably, uh, Carly Hirschberg, who did a very fine job, very scientific, very, very proper. Um, Joe Dispenza, which became quite popular lately, you are the placebo, Kelly Turner, who are collecting uh, um, cases of radical um, remissions. And a common denominator, and this is my experience just as well, there are widely very varied cases, quite differently, but so, somehow there is one aspect in common, and that is there is a deep change in lifestyle, in behavior, or in attitude, or a core belief uh, system that changed. So beside all the clinical stuff, which is helpful and necessary, uh, there is a, a mental change as well going. That's a characteristic uh, of uh, yeah, these uh, spontaneous remissions out of very palliative or final palliative uh, cases. And Carly Hirschberg told what I can tell in any case, and she did uh, 270 cases, very well researched, uh, not just collecting anecdotes. And um, each of them, she said, she came, came forth, came in touch with something that was essential to him or her. Um, they all found a new inner core of their personality and developed their behavior or attitudes uh, towards life and practices that were deeply congruent with their own self. So we, we just keep it in mind. Three cases. The first one is a prostate uh, cancer, and it is a very simple one. And I only want to focus uh, on um, the trans level communicating with uh, cancer cells. Huh? So I, I leave out the rest. And the rest is actually, you, you need to look at, at the life, at inner children, 
if there are inner children in agony, there is no uh, access to deeper uh, layers of uh, your consciousness uh, if they are still inner children in, in agony. So this is, I, I won't concentrate on this one. So the clinic, he has a Gleason score 8. Um, there were suspected lymph nodes, he got surgery, um, and not all lymph nodes were um, excluded. Um, so he got hormone therapy, um, these psycho and spiritual inquiries, which I'd like to go into, and he adopted a vegetarian nutrition. And because we are not talking only about the body, I, I at least want to mention one or two aspects about uh, a selective anamnesis. He said about himself, um, I think I'm respected. I'm a craftsman, I think I'm respected. And you will learn that this will be very important uh, in the context of his tumor as well. So we started a meditation. We're in inducing a trance. Um, and a trance is not uh, a supernatural um, condition. We all have trances. When we look at a, uh, at, at a film, we can sit for two hours in a chair. Uh, we cannot think of anything else. We are totally focused, so it's a quite natural uh, state. And I call it a state of focused concentration. And the point is, you need to establish um, where you, uh, a state where you truly are in the observation mode. You're not thinking, you're not imaginating, you are uh, watching like you would watch a dream. No, you watch picture by picture, but you're not evoking it, you're watching it. So, um, and I leave it out how to get there. Kurt reaches the healthy part of the prostase in his mind, in his imagination. And he says, well, it seems all well. They, they are reddish, they are well perfused. They look uh, yellowish, like, like amber stones. Actually, quite, uh, quite a bright appearance, and they are happy to meet me. And um, so there's a little communication, and then they lead. He's asking them, can you lead me to the others? Okay, they are uh, willing to do so, and these others are larger, more long, darker, and they feel somehow disturbed by the visit. But communication can be established. And, but they say, I, leave, us, leave, leave us alone, we, we don't want to talk. So Kurt reflects how he should approach them, that takes time, and etc. And he sees, well, they feel different, uh, they are disoriented, they are hyperactive, they are running back and forth, there is an atmosphere of uh, pressure, I don't really understand. So um, he came up to, I can ask him directly, uh, what makes you start uh, to be so restlessly driven? And I was a pause and then said, Kurt, well, funny, I just remember something. It was about 10 years ago. It was at the a cherry harvest. I was on the ladder and I fell down. I even uh, lost briefly my consciousness and I wetted myself. And it was so um, embarrassing because five neighbors were watching. Uh, so, uh, but no major injuries though. He hadn't thought for long about it. So we said, in a very, very slow reconstru reconstruction of this accident. Um, and Kurt Kurt perceived it from the perspective because in his mind he was still in, in the pro state. So he see he, he, he felt the, the shock of the fall. He realized that he was thinking, oh, what will the neighbors uh, think more than about uh, the, the angst of uh, being injured? What will they think? Uh, am I stupid enough not to climb a ladder? Um, he hit the ground and he lost briefly uh, consciousness at the time. And there was agony and shock in the pro state and they couldn't hold the pee. He, he later told me he was able to hide it with uh, some wrecks that were around. Mm -hmm. So now in his imagination, he could intervene. He could say, I'm here, I'm with you. And he experienced an enormous relief in the prostate. So before they were so reserved, but now they are open and uh, welcomed him. So he decided he takes a microphone and he says, well, this is King Consciousness, giving a radio speech. This is King, conscious, uh, King Consciousness uh, to all cells. Uh, message is simple. I'm here. I'm with you. I take responsibility. You are not left alone. All is well. So that happened three years ago. He still is entirely tumor-free, uh, PSA close to zero, and he's feeling health-wise is outstanding well, no, no further, uh, uh, not even hormone therapy doing anymore. So, quite, quite nice. Um, well, I don't know why, why a prostate cancer. Uh, we can um, detect from history of the patient as well, the need to be respected was quite dominant. Uh, and if you look at, uh, may, at uh, cats and dogs, they urinate and make the territory, uh, this is my territory. Uh, so maybe uh, urination and uh, territory, which is a, a kind of being respected, this is my territory, has a hidden connect. Uh, 
I don't know. And the loss of control is anyhow a tragic moment. Uh, we, uh, that uh, um, many, uh, when, you less, when you lose consciousness, you are in a state of uh, uh, stuckness. No? You cannot fight, you cannot flight, uh, and this accumulates uh, energy. Okay, that's a simple case. Now uh, I'd like to, to uh, proceed to Brenda. Um, she is a, um, a woman with colon carcinoma, uh, definitely in a palliative state, metastasis in ovaries, liver and lung. And um, she had a primary surgery, chemotherapy, immune therapy, hyperthermia, mistal, and about the same time when I met her, um, she was to go into HIPEC, uh, another radical surgery uh, due to the metastasis. And interesting maybe to mention is Brenda's mom died of the same tumor 10 years ago. And as you will see, there will be an epigenetic uh, cause. So she's a mom of three daughters and about self, she said, well, I, I'm very selfless. So I asked her, um, just think of any childhood memory, something that you have awfully long not thought about. And all of a sudden it came up, I was sitting on the chairs and I was watching my brother doing a breakdance performance. So even that spontaneous childhood uh, memory was actually about somebody else. No? She was sitting aside. It was not about her. And when I asked her what would be a wish uh, to, to the universe, her first idea was, uh, well, health for all of my family. So I'm only uh, giving the extract again, the body travel. There was a trans induction um, and uh, she got into that uh, observation mode. And then she was going to an affected lymph node. And any organ, any cell, or uh, let's stay with the organs, any organ has a so-called leading energy uh, that performs uh, uh, the, the functions. And we cannot grasp energy. It's, uh, it's, well, maybe energy is even the wrong word. But we can say in your imagination, just think that this leading energy now takes a form, I'll help you, in just counting to three. At one, we ask the leading energy uh, of that organ to appear. At two, we ask it to take a form in your visualization that you are able to talk to. And at three, it appears. Whoop, and it does appear. I'm doing this week by week. It does appear. So she saw in her mind a thin, long, male uh, person with white hair. And people are, patients are surprised by what comes up spontaneously. This is a true observation. She said, it's a Gandalf uh, kind of type. And he leads her to the tumor spot. And the tumor spot she saw as a, this is like hot lava, uh, filled with blood and yellow, disgusting. And Brenda could not see the inhabitants. Mm, but she feels it. She feels they are angry and they hide. They feel different, broke, and not accepted by everyone uh, around. So, do you know why? It's most difficult to get in touch with them, but she felt, no, they feel it's always been like this. Uh, um, so you don't know why. Shall we look into the common cause? Would you be interested why you are like this? Yes, we would be interested. No, they agree. So, Brenda is asked to imagine a timeline. Yeah? You know these weights, uh, when, uh, these old-fashioned uh, weight uh, gauges? So when you stand there, you have that uh, weight and you pull that weight in the past. You pull it in the past, in the past, and you wait for the click. So this is a different uh, perception, a different sensation. You wait for the click, and she did, she pushed, she pushed, and she said, no click. There appears no click. So push, keep on pushing, uh, Brenda. Push further and further and further. Push beyond your birth, push further and further. And all of a sudden she says, now it has clicked. And immediately she saw a reflection in the bar. And Brenda sees a picture, a young woman. She smiles, holds a rose, and uh, her head is slightly tilted. Uh, and after a while, whoa, this is my grandmother. This is my grandmother when she was uh, a, a young girl, a, a young woman. So she realized, well, Granny is quite sad. And then the situation unfolds. She was about to marry a man whom her parents had chosen for her. But she's secretly in love with somebody else. And she is in no position uh, to argue with her parents. So. Actually, the next step was we pacify the situation. Brenda moves into the screen, and she knows that Granny knows that she knows, and there's a 
big uh, emotion. Grandma cries, there is relief. Um, now suddenly uh, it, it became open. And then in Brenda's mind, uh, we ask her, can you invite the person she was secretly in love to appear in that scene? Now, Granny Long is dead. No? It's, all, it's like in Familienaufstellung. Right? It's, they are all dead, but the energy still uh, is vibrant, it is living. So that man came, the love man came, he understands and he gives his blessing. They hug and he gives his blessing to Granny and says, it's fine with him, it's all okay and I give my blessing to all of yourselves as well. So, we move back in the now. She pushes back the weight until it clicks in the now. And then the next what she sees is that uh, all these previ previously uh, hidden cells, they came rushing forth. I see them, no hiding atmosphere. Uh, they are complete different atmosphere. And yes, they are willing to cooperate with a, with a Gandalf man. Uh, they are reunited. So this is... I mean, mom died of the same tumor, she has the tumor, uh, and mom's uh, mom uh, was seemingly the, the cause of this. And I don't know, I, I don't know anything. It was just happening as a film in observation in the client's mind. No, it came spontaneously. And remember maybe what Brenda mentioned um, as a feeling when she fell into these tumor cells. I did read it before. She said, they are angry, they hide, they feel different, broke. They are not accepted by everybody around. And wouldn't this sound like Granny at that situation uh, two generations ago? It's exactly that kind of emotional feeling. Okay, this happened two years ago. Uh, the hypex surgery was uh, more or less parallel. I lost contact uh, with the patients, but uh, then I, I felt uh, she's living abroad. I tried to call her up, and in uh, late February, I got her on the phone, and she stated that she still is, is all well. So, um, I mean, it is hypex surgery. It is chemotherapy. It is a complementary thing. But the point is, when the patient experiences experiences himself. If I know something and I tell it, they are words, they fall on the ground and they smash. Only what you experience yourself has the impact to make you change. So this is something that is experiencing in the mind uh, of the patient and she understands and she's totally surprised granny and granny by the way she was a very selfish person. All her life uh, she was totally different than me. Yeah? She was always selfish. No, which is just the other end of the duality line. One, once she had made such a compromise in her life, she, uh, she, she made up for it in being uh, egoistic. Okay, third case, this is uh, Bettina. 51 years old, ovarial carcinoma, and again metastasized into the spine. Um, she got uh, surgery, uh, chemo, and she had quite... A tough life. Huh? Her parents separated soon after birth and even her mom died when Bettina was uh, three years old. She's still quite an outgoing uh, personality but not with men and um, she got an own uh, child but uh, the father uh, he separated even during pregnancy so a repetition again quite quite tough. And um, again um, in induction, um, uh, she, you move in, you feel yourself, uh, she wants to go to the spine and she sees the spine, the healthy part, you never go straight to the problem. The healthy part she feels, well, it, this, sound, it, this feels like red and pink flow of waves no? when I'm uh, in, in my mind uh, visiting my, my spine. And, uh, well, in this case, I put it uh, because uh, it's not always possible to, to communicate in words. Sometimes it's really a dialogue. But in this case, it was not a dialogue. It was not a communication. She just feels they, they want more lumen, and more brightness. So she just opens her eyes, her mind, and she sends in her imagination more brightness. And she sees the flow of light uh, in the spine. And then she realizes, well, they want love. Okay, so I open my heart and I see, I feel inside myself, I feel the love flowing into the spine. Ah, oh, that's so fine. And then she sees, well, there are some dark spots at the, at the edge uh, of the spine. So, okay, we go to the dark spots. No? She's standing there, oh, she's a bit... Uh, um, you, do you want to travel inside? I mean, your consciousness can expand infinitely, but it can make itself very, very small. You can just go inside and check it out. 
She was a bit hesitant, then she decided, I'll take a light suit in her Im imagination. She puts on a light suit, and then she's protected to go inside uh, the, the dark spots. And inside, she sees a dark blob on the wall. It's stinky, it's uh, sticky, and it's dark. And it's difficult to establish a communication, um, but uh, Bettina senses that blob somehow likes blue color. So easy, in my imagination, I just uh, send blue color. And the blue color makes the blob uh, seem to, to, to uh, lose a, a bit of the tightness. Then there are questions. Who are you? What made you become like this? What is your wanting? No responses. Uh, and Bettina does not know itself. So stuck, what, what to do? And then I asked her, imagine an empty screen. In your imagination, you just pull down an empty screen and I'll help you in just counting to three. At one, we ask the universe uh, to show the situation how this blob came into existence. At two, you see a white light going to that screen. You see it? Yes, I see a plain white light. And at three, um, now, what do you see? Uh, um, and she observes uh, spontaneously She's like on top of the mountain, looking into very dark clouds. And she intuitively knows she needs to go inside. Bettina zooms in, and next in these clouds she sees a cage. It needs to go inside, she knows. So it gets narrower and narrower, and only her light suit radiates a little shine. And finally, she reads a wooden room, comfortable, but without doors or windows. I first, first thought, well, this may be an embryonic uh, thing, but uh, it turned out differently. So what is there? to see what is to experience. And Bettina's just quiet. She's just observing, just, just watching. And all of a sudden she says, there are fast rotating, swirling energies that appear in my mind. And a brief impression of a bur uh, burn injury appears. And next, Bettina sees funny long letters and they are bended. Uh, they are not straight. They are, they are bended in themselves and some steps are broken. And then she observes how these pink clouds appear in an orderly line and they touch and integrate these broken steps and make them fine again. And that takes quite a while. Like uh, energy, you cannot, uh, when you're working with energy, you cannot uh, speed it up, you cannot accelerate it. It has its own characteristic. So, I mean, letters that are banded uh, have uh, the association of uh, DNA quite, uh, quite right away. So um, Bettina turns herself away from the skin, looking at the blob who watched together with her, and he smiles at, B at Bettina, and, and, and she sees he's much brighter than before and much softer, and he understands, and now there is even a hug with Bettina. And this is a feedback in the mail uh, from Bettina. That was six, six weeks after she had that PET CT, and the PET CT six weeks after showed no remissions, no uh, lesions, uh, inclusive uh, all um, ascites completely gone. Tumor markers were down six weeks after, down to CA125 to 6, CA to 2.4, uh, confirmed in March uh, the very same way. So uh, within six weeks, from a fully metastasized uh, condition with a cities into nothing, completely gone. And maybe if you look at the post remark, um, the image of the dark clouds, then the, the cave, etc., then the room without doors, these are to me all images and impressions of a journey to one's own inner course, inside herself. She's falling inside herself, and there the metamorphosis takes place, the repair, the healing. And what's nice in this case. Um, you can really realize that me as a therapist, I did nothing. I'm just holding the mirror because all the work needs to be done in the person in himself or herself. Okay, this is the last uh, slide I wanted to show because it is about concepts. Um, and we still are in the tradition that the body and the patient or the human as a whole are seen differently. You know, we have a long tradition to it and uh, uh, in medicine we, we become more and more specialized. Um, we have so many sub-disciplines and uh, the uh, field expands so rapidly uh, it's almost impossible to follow up.
So when you treat the organ and not the patient, uh, there are questions like, where is this prostate patient? Uh, or if you are a radiation interventional radiologist, how many livers uh, we have to do still today? What are the guidelines of bladder carcinoma and pancreatic patients we treat with gemcitabine, fulforin, etc.? Um, and maybe just make a switch to the business world. That once in the last century, there were the, the huge, large companies in the U.S. were the railway companies. The concept was, we are railways. If they would have thought, which is just a concept, we are in transport business, maybe they would still be existing, but they thought we are in railway. Or um, there was a big company uh, called Kodak uh, that says, we are films. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. So if a company uh, says, I'm an oil company, maybe difficult. Maybe even difficult to say, I'm we produce cars. So I just want to give this as an inspiration to think about uh, concepts. We need concepts. They reduce, they com reduce complexity, but as well, they limit our true potential of creativity. So I really feel, in addition to clinical treatment, there is an immense potential to use a person's spiritual powers for healing. And I'm asking you to have the courage, uh, to mediate the courage in your patients to take up uh, the relevant themes. Because a disease or a chronic disease or whatsoever doesn't come out of the blue. It has definitely a connect with the life and with uh, the history. Maybe not even one's own life. It may be even like an energy able to um, step uh, over different generations. But there, there is a topic uh, that is related to disease. So... Thank you for your openness to allow even such exotic uh, themes in the conference. Es gibt keine Patienten, es gibt keine Therapeuten, es gibt nur Menschen.